My name is Arthur Schmidt. I am the son of the late Marian Schmidt, the mathematician who became a photographer, filmmaker, writer, and teacher. And since I share his passion for photography and filmmaking, I will tell you the story behind my father's life-changing experiences with this series of short films. I will tell you how some of his iconic photographs came to be. And in sharing with you the details of his approach to art, I'm also sharing with you how he inspired me in my own creative work and how he keeps inspiring me to this day. The story of the Schmidt family was very difficult and complicated. After the Second World War in 1946, the Schmidt family left Poland to France and in 1947, they then emigrated to Caracas, Venezuela. Marian was two years old. By the age of 12, Marian was interested in both photography and filmmaking. His father bought a camera for himself in 1957 so that he could photograph his family privately. It was a 35mm Konica with a 50mm lens. Little did my grandfather know that by doing so, he would inadvertently awaken a great passion in his son, Marian, who would borrow the camera from his father. Two years later, his father bought an 8mm Canon film camera and two lenses. Once again, Marian felt inspiration flowing. He was by this time growing even more fascinated by movies, and he convinced his father to buy two more lenses for his Canon film camera. By the age of 14, Marian was already very active in making films and taking photographs. Igniting his passion even further, my grandfather took my father to the cinema. They saw all of Charlie Chaplin's movies, Vidas Canal, Munch's Eroica, Kurosawa's Seven Samurai, Rashomon, and more. Ironically, his father's dream was for Marian to become an engineer. And yet, in buying a film camera, a photo camera, and taking Marian to the movies, he accidentally guided his son to what would become Marian's life path. Marian wasn't raised in a religious environment, quite the opposite. He was a rationalist who preferred the theory of probability rather than to believe in fate or in any kind of higher power. He kept asking himself metaphysical questions to which he could not find answers. When he was 15, he went to see an Ingmar Bergman movie called Ansik Tet. In English, the film's title becomes The Magician. Seeing that film, Marian's tiny, peaceful world fell completely apart. Back then in Caracas, films were seen on an enormous screen in a luxurious movie theater. After seeing this film, he was so moved, he could not sleep the whole night. Mm -hmm. 
And then he saw several more Bergman films. The Seventh Steel, Wild Strawberries, Sawdust and Tinsel. Now there were no doubts in Marianne's mind. He would become a film director. And just like Bergman, he would make personal, inspiring, metaphysical movies. However, fate took an unexpected turn. His parents refused to finance Marion's studies at the Los Angeles Film School, UCLA, where he wanted to go at that time. So, when it was discovered that Marion also possessed a natural talent for mathematics, he decided, with the support of a scholarship in science, to go that path instead. During those studies in the US, Marian learned to work systematically, something he was not used to. He was discovering basic mathematical theories by himself without going to classes. And he was going through intense emotions with each new discovery. At the beginning of his mathematical studies, he was simply discovering what was already known. However, during his PhD studies at Brandeis, he made discoveries in mathematics that were wholly original, brand new things never discovered before. What fascinated him the most in mathematics was the search for truth, the act of discovery, and the elegance of some of the mathematic proofs. At Brandeis, Marian met John Nash, who's featured in the film A Beautiful Mind. This encounter had a huge impact on his life, and he realized he would never be a mathematician on Nash's level. At some point, Marian started to feel that mathematics did not fully satisfy him. Something was missing in his life. He was working on his PhD, and at the same time, Marian was learning photography on his own. In fact, the only photography lesson Marian ever had in his entire life lasted 15 minutes. It was during one encounter with a student of Minor White who decided to meet him on the street. White's student looked at the photographs Marian was taking and he said to him, You know what? You're afraid of people. He explained to Marian that he should not take photographs of people while being so far away from them. Because, he pointed out, I cannot feel the people in your photographs. When looking at them, all I can feel is that feeling of distance and lack of emotions towards the people portrayed. He said to Marian, sell your Nikon with all your telephoto lenses and instead buy a Leica with a 50mm lens and start approaching people. Then he also told him, you know what? Your photographs are ugly. They are not aesthetic. Why? Search for a sense of aesthetic. And that's it. The whole lesson. A 15 minutes discussion and the student of minor white saved my father. Marian sold his Nikon, bought an old Leica and began to look at albums with paintings from great masters. He also started to draw around those characters on the paintings and to recreate the entire figures present on the paintings as separate drawings. He gained a sense of aesthetics from paintings, not from photographs. And in this moment, everything began to change. However, it was only in 1968 that Marian would truly formulate his personal approach to art. He started to read books by Hermann Hesse and Jiddu Krishnamurti, which prepared him internally for what was about to happen to him. These books awakened his sensitivity to spirituality. It is also during this period that he kept wandering around with his photo camera and he decided that he did not want to become a mathematician. 
that it was not his life path to be a mathematician. He realized that if he was to devote his life to mathematics with the continuous, heavy, daily intellectual effort that required, he wouldn't be able to develop other aspects in his life. He felt doing so would mean he would not live a full life. In 1968, Marian experienced a series of extraordinary events which culminated in a spiritual transformation going beyond any emotional and intellectual layers and which he never knew before. This was when his father, who was very ill at that time, came back from the hospital. Marian went to visit him at his home. One day, his parents had to go out somewhere. During their absence, Marian was lying on a couch in his room reading Damien by Hermann Hesse. He could also see the sun setting behind his window. Suddenly, without knowing how, Marian left his body. He had an out-of-body experience. He left his body and began to float somewhere above his own self, above the room literally. As he was trying to touch his body with his own hands, he could not feel anything. He lost his sense of touch. This whole process was taking place effortlessly. In a way, his mind was everywhere in the room, observing everything. From above, he was observing his long silhouette lying still on the couch. He was not afraid. He could see the whole room with all its details. And then, he started to feel at peace. He felt a huge amount of tranquility and quietness enveloping the entire space in the room. He felt the uniqueness of this moment, a feeling of absolute freedom and a liberation from all earthly problems. He could not remember how long it lasted. He lost the sense of time. And then, suddenly, he heard the noises of the front door opening. The voices of his parents. He came back to his body. At that moment, he was filled with an omnipresent, universal, unconditional love. His father, who was very tired, went to his room to lie down. Marian slowly rose from his couch walked to and opened the door to his father's room, where he stood, looking at him for several minutes. Although they, he and his father, had painful misunderstandings in the past, at that moment, Marian was very moved and could only feel tremendous love and gratitude towards his father. Their misunderstandings were no longer important. This love which Marian felt at that moment was not only for his father, but also for the entire world, nature, people, existence itself. Marian felt as if he was one with the entire universe, as if everything was connected. He was filled with a feeling of universal love he had never experienced before. At that moment, he started to understand what spirituality really meant. At that moment, he also understood what the secret of masterpieces was. The secret behind great works of art. They were carriers of transcendence. They were windows allowing us to take a look into a different invisible realm. Carriers of transcendence. He realized that if Hesse and Krishnamurti gave him the inspiration to experience transcendence through their works, then this is what art really means. Art is a means to experience transcendence. Art is a means to experience transcendence. He promised himself there and then that no matter what he would be doing in the future, whether it were films or photographs, he would always strive to convey experiences similar to those he just experienced. 
he decided he would not take aggressive flashy or avant-garde photographs. What interested him was the discovery of that other realm, subtle, poetic, and hidden in our everyday life. This is the first photograph taken by Marian, which he considered worthy of showing publicly. He took it in 1969, when he was still a PhD student in mathematics. The place is Walden Pond, Massachusetts, where Henry David Thoreau, or Thoreau, the American pacifist poet, came to meditate. Marian's approach to photography was that the composition be very clean, that there be a relation between all the elements present in the frame of the image. But above all, he was searching for a feeling of authenticity, a true living experience. Only what is true can deeply move another person. What is phony or faked cannot move anybody. The feeling of joy expressed by the man with the dog is so intense that Marian did not need to come closer. Marian successfully defended his doctorate. At the same time, he knew he would not keep being a mathematician.